today we are going to discuss about a new chapter in mathematics which is probability in lower classes we studied about the concept of probability as a measure of uncertainty probability is a measure of uncertainty uncertainty means it has some errors measure of uncertainty means we have no accurate value over that measurement so we use probability for measuring that quantity there are two types of probability in mathematics one is classical theory one is classical theory and another one is statistical approach another one is statistical approach in general to obtain the probability of an event we find the ratio of number of outcomes favorable to the event to the total number of equally likely outcomes that is for example for classical theory if we toss a die or if we roll a die the even number should be 3 by 6 or which is equal to 1 by 2 this is the method in classical theory of probability but in the statistical approach to find probability it is based on the basis of observation it is based on observation and collected data it is based on observation and collected data so it is called statistical approach but both the theories have some serious difficulties for instance these theories cannot be applied to activities or experiments which have infinite number of outcomes these two theories are useful only in finite number of finite number of outcomes finite number of outcomes and we cannot use it for infinite number of activities or experiments so to define probability we used likely or equally probable outcomes this is logically not correct definition thus another theory of probability was developed by a mathematician called a n a n kolmo guro in 1963 defined a new branch of probability called axiomatic approach of probability that probability is called axiomatic approach of probability in which we, we can find infinite number of outcomes to understand this approach we must know about few basic terms that are random experiments random experiments sample space etc so we are going to discuss about the axiomatic approach of probability for that we must study some of the new terms called random experiments sample space events etc random experiments can be defined as the experiment which results may not be same when they are repeated these are the experiments which results which which results are not the same when they are repeated when they are 
repeated. For example, rolling a dice. Rolling a dice is an example of random experiment, which means in the first roll, if we get the value 2, then on the next roll, we have getting 4 over 5. That is, these are the different results. So, we can say that the rolling a dice is an example of random experiment. And another example is tossing a coin. On tossing a coin, we will get two outcomes. One is head and one is tail that are totally different. So, tossing a coin is also an example of random experiment. So, we have to give a condition for a, an experiment to be random. These conditions are called conditions of random experiment. Conditions of random experiment. The first condition is the, it has more than, it has more than one possible outcome. Then the next condition is, it is not possible, it is not possible to predict, to predict the outcome in advance. These are the two conditions. If these conditions satisfied, we call it as a random experiment. So, what are the conditions? It has more than one possible outcome. For example, in tossing a coin, we have two, out, two different outcomes, head and tail. And in a rolling a dice, we have six outcomes that are different in nature and the next is we cannot predict. It is not possible to predict the outcome in advance. If these two conditions are satisfied, we call it the experiment as random experiment. Then the next point is outcome and sample space. Outcomes and sample space. Outcome can be defined as the result of a random experiment. A possible result of a random experiment is called outcome. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the possible result of the random experiment rolling a dice. And if we tossing two coins simultaneously, we get this result. Two coins simultaneously. So we get the possible outcome as head, tail, head, head, tail, head and tail, tail. So we can say that the outcome is the possible result of a random experiment. The set of outcomes is called sample space. Sample space can be defined as the set of outcomes. The set of outcomes. It is denoted by the letter S. For example, in a two coin tossing experiment, we have the sample space S is equal to a set. Set H, S, H, T, T, H and T, T. The set is called the sample space of the outcome. And each element, each element is called sample point. Each element is called sample point. So, it is called outcomes and sample space. Next, we are going to discuss another thing that is event. 
but is an event. Any subset of sample space is called event. It can be defined as any subset. Any subset of sample space. Any subset of sample space is called an event. For example, we have we have the subset of causing two coin tossing two coins that are H H and T H H T and T T. This this is called sample space. This is sample space. Event is represented by the letter E. We can say that event E is equal to the subset of sample space. That is the outcome corresponding to occurrence of one head. The outcome corresponding to the occurrence of one head. The, the, these are the possible outcomes for one head. One head in two coin in two coin tossing. The possible event can be represented as TH and HD. So we can say that the event is a subset of sample space. It is represented by the letter E. So that these are the main important terms in defining probability. Next, we are going to discuss about the types of events. Events can be classified into various types based on the elements they have. The first one is the impossible event. The impossible event. Let us consider a sample space of rolling a dice. It, it has the outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. An impossible event can be defined as it is an empty set. It is an empty set which means it has no element in that set. For example, let E be an event that is the number of or the number the number appears on the dice on the dice is multiple of seven multiple of seven this is a consider an event that is the number appears on the die is a multiple of 7. We know that we have only 1 to 6 numbers here. It has no number that is a multiple of 7. So we can say that the event, the event is a, is an impossible event. It is represented by the letter phi. Impossible event can be represented by the letter Fine. Clearly, no outcome satisfies the condition in the given event. That is, no element of the sample space ensures the occurrence of the event E. Thus, we can say that the empty set only corresponding to the event E. In other words, we can say that it is impossible to have a multiple of 7 on the upper face of the die. Thus, the event E is equal to phi is an impossible event. It is an impossible event. This also can be represented as empty set because there is no element corresponding to that event. The next event is the sure event. The sure event. Now consider the sample space of rolling a dice. That is, we are having 
six elements here. Now consider a subspace or an event which, which is given as the number turns the number turns up is odd or even. Odd or even. This is an event. This is a subspace. So we can say that the event consists of all these numbers because either one or two will appear. So we can say that it is odd or even. So clearly we can say that all outcomes of the experiment ensures the occurrence of the event E. That is it is a sure event. So we can say that it is a sure event. The next event is simple event. We can say that if an event E has only one sample point of a sample space, it is called simple or elementary event. In a sample space containing n distinct elements, there are exactly n simple events. For example, consider tossing two coins. We have the sample space H, 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 T, T, H and T, T. These are the sample space of tossing two coins. There are four simple events corresponding to the sample space. That is, we are having E1 is equal to H, H, E2 is equal to the set H, T, E3 is equal to T, H and E4 is T, T. All these four events corresponding to a simple event because there is no repetition of the event once again. So we can say that these are simple events. There are four simple events corresponding to the sample space. So we can say that or it is having only one outcome. So we can say that it is a simple event. The next is the compound event. If an event has more than one sample point, it is called a compound event. We can say that more than one sample point, more than one sample point, we can say that it is a compound event. For example, in the experiment of tossing a coin thrice, tossing, we are tossing a coin thrice. So, we get a sample space of, for example, how head appears, then two tails, then two head, then tail, etc. Thus, we are having a sample space of, like, sample space like this. Consider an event E, which corresponds to exactly one head exactly one head. So, that is, that's correspond to the set H, T, 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 H, T, then T, T, H. So, we can say that it is a compound event because each of the subset containing more than one sample point. Yes, there, there are three sample points here. So, we can say that it is a compound event. And another example is consider the subset at least one head. At least, at least one head. So, we can say that H, T, 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 H, T, etc. So, we can say that there, these are having more than one sample point. So, we can say that more than one sample point corresponds to 
the compound event so we are discussing about types of event there are four types of event they are the impossible event sure event the simple event and compound event the next topic is about algebra of events we already discussed about the events and the types of events earlier here we are going to combine events using some notations the notations are similar to the notations we used in the chapter of sets the first one is the complementary event it is denoted by the letter a dash or a prime for this consider an experiment of tossing three coins we are tossing three coins so we get a sample space like this three head at a time two head at a time and one tail then one tail two head one head two tail t t t there are eight elements in the set so next we are going to consider an event a which is represented as only one tail appear only one tail appears so the set will be like this only one tail so we have h t h and h h t there are three elements in the set or in the subset now consider an another outcome which is given as h t t we we know that h t t here only one head is there and which is not in the set a so we can say that not a not a has occurred that is the element is not in the set a so we can say that the the outcome h t t is not a means not an element of a has occurred so we may say that the event not a has occurred thus we can define the complementary event not a so we can define the the complementary the complementary event event a prime or a dash we can say that not a a prime which is it is to can also be defined as not a that is we can say that the elements which corresponds to a are the one tail here here and here these are the elements in the set a the remaining elements the remaining elements are not occurred that means it is not in the set a so we can say that these are the complementary event these are the complementary event the elements which do not occur while performing the event a is goes to the complementary event which is represented as a prime which is also defined as not a so this is the one of the algebra that is we used to combine two that is two events that is we are having a and a complement in our set we can write 
the complementary event A as a set omega, omega an element of S and omega not an element of A. Here omega means elements of the elements of set yes sample space and we can define the complementary event a prime as omega omega it is an element of subspace sample space yes and a not an element of a this is the mathematical representation of complementary event a prime the second one is the event a or b consider two set consider two set a and b we can define the event a or b as a union b that is the set is contained all the elements which are either in A or B or in both which means all those elements all those elements which are either in set A or B or in both for example consider the set S having numbers 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6. Now define a set A which is odd numbers. Which is odd numbers. So we can say that it is given as 1, 3 and 5. And B as prime numbers. And prime numbers that is 1, 3 and 5 again. So we can say that the event A or B or we can define as A union B as both the elements in A or B or in both. Mathematically we can write A union B as omega omega element of a or omega element of b the elements in the set a union b is from a or from b or from both this is an example of event or if we can define the event a or b as a union B. The third one is the event A and B. Let A and B be two events. Then we can say that A and B be the intersection of two sets. That is defined by the symbol like this. We can say that it is the intersection that is the intersection of A and B A and B that is A intersection B is a set of those elements which are common to both A and B the elements are common to both A and B Consider an example throwing a die twice. So an event is defined as score on the first throw is 6 and B is the sum of sum of two scores is at least at least 11. The set corresponding to the event A will be 
given as we can say that first throw is six so all the elements will be first element will be six that is six one six two six three six four six five and six six now for the second one that is for the b event sum of two score is at least 11 so we have the set 6 5 you can say that 6 plus 5 is equal to 11 and 5 6 and 5 6 at least you can say that it is at least also one more element is there that is 6 6 it is 12 it is the Please note that it is at least 11. So we can say that 6, 5, 5, 6 and 6, 6 are the elements of A and B. Now A intersection B or we define the event A and B. So we get A and B. So we are having the elements common to both A and B. That is 6, 5. Here it is 6, 5 and it is 6, 6. It is 6, 6. So we are having only two elements 6, 5 and 6, 6 are the element of A and B. That is which are common to both set A and B. Mathematically we can define A intersection B as omega. Omega element of A and omega element of b so this is the mathematical representation of the event a and b the next is the fourth one is the event a but not b not b will be given as b complement so we can say that a but not B. So it is an intersection. It is an intersection. It is denoted by A minus B. This is the event A but not B. Consider the experiment of rolling a die. Let A be an event getting a prime number B be an event getting an odd number. Write the set representing the event A or B, A and B, A but not B and not A. So it is given that we are rolling a die. We are rolling a die. So the set will be, the sample set will be S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The event A is represented as getting a prime number. Getting a prime number. We know that prime number is from the subset it is prime number is 2, 3, and 5 and next we have an event which is getting an odd number which is getting an odd number and we can say that the odd numbers are the 1, 3 and 5 so these are the two set we are going to combine here the first one is the first question is we are finding A or B. A or B. So A or B can be defined as A union B. That is A union B is the both elements in A or B or either in A and B. That is we are having one here 1, it is 2, then both having 3 and 5. So we are having the elements 1, 
two, three, and five. It is it is the union of set. It is the union of set that is the elements of the set A union B is from both the elements of A and B. The second one is A and B. A and B corresponding to A intersection B. A intersection means it is common. The elements which are common to the A and B. That is they are 3 and 5. Here 3 and 5 are common numbers. Then the next one is A but not B. We already defined A. It is A intersection B dash. So we can say that it is also A minus B. That is from the A we are we are neglecting the elements of B. That is we are having 3 and 5 here. So we are eliminating 3 and 5 from the set A. So we get the value 2 A minus B. The next is note A. Note A corresponding to complementary A. A complement. That is the elements which is not included in the set A. That are 1, 4 and 6. These are the answers of the question. A die is thrown. Describe the following events. We know that for dice is thrown, we have the subspace 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And the first case is A. A is given us a number less than 7. So we can define the subset A. The number less than 7 is from 1 to 6. That is A will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Then the next one is B. B is a number greater than 7. A number greater than 7 which is an empty set because we are only having up to 6 number in the sample space. So B is empty set. Then for the third it is for C it is given that it is a multiple of 3. It is a multiple of 3. You can say that multiple of 3 is 1 into 3, 3. That is 1 into 3, 1 into 3, 3, 2 into 3 is 6. So we are having two elements 3 and 6. Then the fourth one is D which is a number less than 4. The number less than 4 is 1, 2 and 3. Then the fifth one is E, that is an even number greater than 4. The even number greater than 4 is 6. And the sixth one is F. F is a number not less than 3. A number not less than 3. Which means which is greater than 3. That is 4, 5 and 6. A number not less than 3. That is which means it is greater than 3. So we are having all the set A, B, C, D and E, F. Now we are going to find the intersection, union, complement etc. So the first one is A union B. We are finding the A union B. A union B is the elements in either A or 
in B. So that is, since B is empty set, we have to write all the elements in the set A. That is A union B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next, A intersection, A intersection B. That is, the set, com the elements common to A and B. That is, it is an empty set. It is an empty set because here there is no element here. The next one is B union C. Again, B is an empty set, so only the element of elements of C exist. Then E intersection F. Intersection means that is common to both. Common to both, that is 6. Then D intersection E. D intersection E is no, no element because there is no common element in D and E. Then A minus C. A minus C means the set A minus set C. That is we are neglecting the 3 and 6 from A. That is we are having 1, 2, 4 and Five. We are neglecting the element of C, that is 3 and 6 from the set A. Next, we are having D minus E. Since there is no element in the E, that is 1, 2, 3 itself. Then, E intersection F dash. E, that is E intersection F dash is, F dash means not F. Not F. E intersection. Not F. That is, not F is given as 1, 2, 3. Is the not F. That is, not in the set F. The elements not in the set F are 1, 2, 3. So, we can say that E intersection F is the, the elements common to E and F dash. It is an empty set. So, this is the answer.